Omo la di se eh. As I declare you so. I say make a stroll and start inside the street of the social media. As my go find update for my people. For right, as I did, they go, they be gay. What is this up? As I say, <laughs> Rufa, Ruben Abati. Ayo, based on the arrest school lifestyle. So they don't come and they don't re reply. <laughs> that statement where Wale show you can make concerning Peter Obi and the obedience. Call everybody liar. Say Peter Obi is a liar. Peter Obi will be there for the regional movement. Blah, blah, talks all kinds of things. Rufai and Ruben Abbasi don't reply the guy. Also, that man will come out yesterday with us in a in my local classmates. Maybe say he not come out since I mean, almost 20 something years. They don't see truth, man. I don't want to talk too much. When I watch the video, yeah, the Microsoft Word, where they drop for inside this matter. So. Well, let's begin what's trending. In Stellenbosch, South Africa, where Nobel laureate Wale Shoinka made a controversial claim accusing the leadership of the Labour Party of being aware that their party's presidential candidate, Peter Obi, lost the February 25th election. The Nobel laureate was speaking at an event titled The Lives of Wale Shoinka, a dialogue organized by Africa in the world. Shoinka used the Yoruba phrase, Bajwe, which means obtaining by deception to describe the actions of the Labour Party, stating that they are trying to force a lie on Nigerians, especially the youth, that Obi won the election. Let's take a listen. And so I could say categorically that Peter Obi's party came third, not even second. And that the leadership knew it. Mm. Well, they wanted to do what we call in Yoruba, Bajwe. <laughs> that is, you know, you have force of arms. Mm -hmm. You also have force of lies. Mm. And it was gearing up towards Berlin. They were going to send some of the hardliners were going to send crowds, young people, into the streets to demonstrate. I'm always ready to be among such demonstrators, but only on the banner of truth, not of lies, not of deceit. Peter Obi achieved something remarkable there, that he broke that mold. Yes, mm -hmm. however, he did not win the election. All right, Dr. Bati, that uh, phrase, Bajwe, got me. I mean, uh, you know that Ole Shoinka has always been quite vocal about Peter Obi's, you know, emergence as a, whether it is a third force or not. But before I come to you, let me take some tweets. This is from Omar, who wrote, no one can be seen to say categorically that someone didn't win an election if the person cannot show proof of what he asserts. It is on prof to show us why his assertion is true. Was he in the 36 states monitoring the elections or his agencies were on a report affirmed so? Well, Lawrence also wrote, why does Wally Shoinka feel so comfortable saying terrible things against Peter Obi? He claims Peter Obi was mobilizing youth for protests, while in truth, Peter Obi was the one telling the youth to keep away from protests, the youth are blaming Peter Obi for not allowing them protests. Wale Shoinka is saying Peter Obi was mobilizing the youth to protest. I mean, Lawrence Street was quite apt. We do know that Peter Obi has been telling everyone to stay calm until Judgment Day. Judgment Day has come and gone, and we have not seen any violence. So, I mean, it is quite worrisome to hear Professor Wale Shoinka make such assertions. Dr. Abad. very straightforward. Yeah. The obedience. Yes. Those characters on uh, social media yeah. who give uh, Peter Obi a bad name, yeah. they finally lost uh, Professor Wally Shinka. You recall that before now he had complained about this uh, obedience, some people call them some other names, you know, uh, operating on social media and forcing Peter Obi down everybody's uh, throats. And he said, look, at that time, that Peter Obi was even his favorite candidate mm. because he wanted change in Nigeria and he thought somebody else, new blood, uh, should provide the uh, leadership. Many of the other people who in fact supported uh, Peter Obi, they backed away from him because of the behavior of these characters, you know, who abuse everybody, who think their own version of the truth is the only version of reality. So. That's the evidence you have seen there. And you could see Okendebe, the um, uh, interviewer, 
you know, <laughs> feeling well, where is Prof going in this matter? Yeah. That's number one. The second part, of course, is that Professor Walishunga is just expressing an opinion. Mm. His opinion does not matter in this matter. The uh, Court of Appeal has ruled, right, the way the uh, presidential election petition tribunal handled the matter. Mr. Peter will be himself and the other petitioner, the um, People's Democratic Party and Atiku Abubakar, they have said they are going all the way to the Supreme Court. What the law provides for is that it's the APS court in presidential matters that we have the final say. And I think, you know, while it is normal, natural, for people to react to uh, court rulings, mm -hmm. in this particular matter, is the Supreme Court that will tell us the truth of it. Yes, so um, Professor Shoinka is not in a position because he's not a shamanist. He's not a futurologist. <laughs> he once wrote a play called Requiem for Futurologists. So he himself cannot act as a futurologist mm -hmm. in the matter. So we all should just calm down mm -hmm. and wait for you know, the Supreme Court. And when he says bad uh, deception, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, there are some other commentators who will say, Professor Shoinka is accusing uh, 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 Peter Obi and the Labour Party of a uh, bad jewel of deception. But some people will say, in fact, the entire election was an act <laughs> in Grant Badjue. Badjue. <laughs> a whole deceptive operation. Yeah, you yeah. know, there are people who, even if you wake up oh, them up 10 years from now, mm -hmm. they will still say 2023 general election was a Did complete Badjue. Coaching Professor Shoinka. Yeah. So it's not just about a uh, Labour Party. You know, and it's on the basis of that that we are saying that there are certain reforms that will still need to take place. There are certain consequential steps that will have to be taken by the National mm -hmm. Assembly with regard to the electoral framework yeah. in Nigeria. Yeah. So that phrase, Bajue, don't limit it to <laughs> <laughs> where well, Professor Joinka has located right. it. Yeah. Some people will tell you it's an entire Bajue that we are dealing yeah. with. Yeah, well, the election, I mean, it has gone to the Supreme Court and we'll wait for the Supreme Court judgment. I mean, obviously, his statement has elicited a lot of reactions. Well, in the same vein, a public affairs analyst, Duro Jaye Ugunsoya, was trending on Wednesday after he stated during a live television interview that he was a classmate of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu at the Chicago State University and graduated alongside the president from the Department of Accounting and Business Administration in 1979. Well, during the interview, Ogun Sonya accused those disputing Tinubu's academic records of being mischievous because Tinubu was a governor for eight years and would have had a university degree. So we met in the school, Chicago State University, mm -hmm. and we were in the same department, College of Accounting, Business and Administration. With major in accounting. Yes, yes. With major in accounting. And we were in the same class together and we graduated. He did attend the university, Chicago State University, and he graduated in 1979. Uh, okay, as you did. As I did. Uh, in, in 1979. Yes, yeah, so I'm here to testify that he did attend the university and he was a good student. People were being mischievous in the first place, because he was a governor for eight years, somebody who worked for Mobile for several years, and you, and you contest him that he didn't go to college university. How is that possible? I, mean, I, can, I cannot imagine how that is possible, that they are claiming that he didn't go to the... Sometimes the president might be embellished, you know, sometimes, but that does not mean that he didn't attend university. He did attend university, he was a governor for eight years. <laughs> well, all right. All right. I, I mean, I don't know if you need a, a university degree to be a governor, no, but, like but certainly you do need one to, uh, you know, work at Mobile. So, I mean, um, Mr. Ogun, Ogun Soya has definitely caused a lot of reactions as well. Let me take one from Leoma who wrote, it's been 23 years since Sinabu's Chicago qualifications were first challenged and suddenly Dro Jaye Ugunsoya, a public affairs analyst with no digital footprint, suddenly remembers he attended school with Tinubu and used to mock his accent. Well, Nigeria is a funny place. Another Twitter user, Raymond, goes, 
A simple Google search of Duro Jaye Ogunsoya shows that this man didn't exist till two days ago. No Lincoln, Facebook, or even Chicago State University link outside his ambiguous claims. Do these clowns think this is the 1980s or 1990s? Information is everywhere and accessible. Well, Raymond, I mean, he may not have a LinkedIn of, yeah. you know, a digital footprint, um, and not everybody does. Let's say he's not digital. But that so actually I mean, was uh, the rhetoric on social media, yes, whether I mean, or not, you know, where did he come from? So, and I, I, it's quite curious, Oji. Yes. That's the first thing that came to mind as well when I said, oh, finally, someone has come out as a witness yes. to give an interview to not just talk about the fact that they went to university together, mm -hmm. but even give a character um, witness in terms of well, the kind of student that he was. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Duro Jaye Ogunsonya can come out as a student to say what he wants to say, but he cannot, we can't take that as a certificate. We can't take that as records from the university. It's good to see, you know, people, you know, so, I mean, if someone come out to testify that you and I were seatmates in university. Well, beyond that, people have made questions around where are the pictures? Did they not take pictures in 1979? You know, the people not, do we not have records again? Why is Chicago State University, you know, not being very forthcoming with regards to information? Yes, they've said, oh, they, 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 we had to Matuko Bubaka has gone to court to try and get, get them to release information with regards to the educational qualifications of President Balatinubu. But this has to go down as one of the most controversial in terms of the credentials of a president in Nigeria. I mean, we have cases like this often, but this is quite interesting. And I think just to put the matter to rest, mm -hmm. certificate, show us evidence of the fact that you went to university. And by the way, the fact that you worked in a certain organization doesn't mean, I'm sure you, I mean, some people will know of Oluyole, where they are said. So it's Is not it Oluwole. 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 Well, that shows Oluwole. I don't patronize Oluwole. that service. Oluwole. 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 Oluwole is in Baghdad. Where you yeah. print fake certificates. Yeah, so I'm just saying that things, that's yeah. not all these things. Yeah. Just give us the real, that's what Nigerians just want to know the truth. Yes. Now let me go to what Professor Shoyinka said, because that's why I'm quite, um, you know, as a young person in Nigeria, yes. Professor Shoyinka as a citizen is well within his rights to decide to de choose or support a particular mm -hmm. political party. Yes. However, I believe because of his status as a statesman, a lot of people would expect that he would be a, you know, a, 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 um, a, a, he would be non-partisan to at least to a very large extent. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this obsession with Mr. Peter Obi and the Labour Party and the obedience is um, with Professor Wale Shoyinka. What really occurred? Why is he so... Don't That's forget that there's a second, there's a first runner up in the person of Atiku Abubakar. <laughs> they're not talking about him. He's the third place position mm -hmm. who seems to go there or such that yes. their first statement, you know, what is really going on? And so I just say that in terms of that, he has, he has a right to his opinion. Mm -hmm. But I also think very, um, lastly, it is unfair to paint the obedient movement, which has been praised in many ways mm -hmm. for changing the political landscape of Nigeria in many ways as being, you know, just with really bad names. Because in every, in, in most movements, mm -hmm. They're extremists, but you cannot base an entire movement on, ex on extreme few and say that the, the, all of the obedience are extreme. I, that's, I don't agree with that. Fine, I know you wanted to make a comment I on mean, that. I mean, I have a lot to say, Oji, that time oh. will not permit me. Okay. That's the problem with what's trending. Hey, yeah. Welcome back to <laughs> At first, let us start. Okay. I think, like Aya said, it is wrong to paint the obedient movements. There are other people of a certain political party that harass people too. In fact, I had a taste of my own. It's just because I didn't take the case up. When people from this known political party harass me in an elevator in Transco Hotel oh, in Abuja. Sorry about that, I guess they harassed me in an elevator. So when people say all sorts about the media, and constantly, if you go check my media, they are constantly casting as passions and saying all sorts of stupid things. If it's not somebody I have a very strong mental strength. Mm. You do, Rufa. Yes. You do. You're Every busy. single day I'm being really abused. So when yeah. people say it's the obedient movement, oh. we don't tell the truth in this country. And that's why there, the a, country... A, a whole movement. So that's why the country has become a grand scene of right. badjue and GBT. Yeah. And concerning what brother, he has a right to say whatever he wants to say, but please, let's be balanced mm -hmm. for the sake of God. The real badjue in all of this election is INEC that promised something and didn't do it. Yeah. The INEC that told a lot of Nigerians to come out that we have video footages of Mr. Fesos Okoye constantly coming out to say these methods will be used and nothing was done. That's the real bad way in this. Oh. So let's call it speed is speed. Oh, the problem is we don't like to call it speed is speed. All right. Thirdly, because I'm here and we have to go because of yes. time. Thirdly, as regards this uh, Mr. Duro and uh, this conundrum and everything, 
If you come out to say you went to school with somebody, you have to prove it. You came on air, there were no pictures. You came on air, there were no enough proof and other things. He has to be able to come to proof. And part of proving it also means subjecting himself to other media. So he should come to arise probably. 15 minutes. We're waiting. Let's interview him. Yeah. Let's ask him more questions and all of that. And I'm sure he also knows that there's a case currently going on in the court as regards, and let me go back to it, as regards a subpoena by Nauru Eba. Well, that that case has now come out to light again, well, that that we are seeing and that petition is, is out one. there, you this know, because some characters yeah. said all sorts of lies and shenanigans. Mm -hmm. So, you see, let's just tell the truth. The truth will set all of us free. Right. The last time, 23 years ago, when this case came up, it was in, in the State House of Assembly that helped quell the tide of the case. Mm -hmm. Now it's back up again. Let's just... Yeah. Full disclosure. Well, I just wanted to curious, quickly yeah. clarify that um, um, petition that was up there. It was re uh, in, on September 8th, a uh, response from CSU to article stating that, you know, Tinubu did attend the Chicago State University, as well as the fact that they cannot truly confirm the, um, you know, originality of his certificate because they consider it as a, you know, one of those, uh, <laughs> how do you call it, a, a praise certificate of, of some sort. So well, that was that I'm petition curious, up there. Yeah is that this matter of President Tinubu's academic qualification has been on the table for more than 20 years, yes. since he was governor. Okay, why is it that when he was governor of Lagos State, <laughs> nobody showed up? <laughs> so this uh, Duro Jayogu, or what is his name? Come to arise, you know, let us talk. He was not around come here. over 20 years ago. <laughs> and in any case, if you look at him, he looks uh, quite younger than the he president. Does, yeah. So uh, he you know, come to arise, maybe it's on the basis of that that David uh, Undeni is now saying that this witness, this character witness, yeah. this uh, classmate witness, uh, is uh, fake. Yeah. Because David Undeni has said that, I'm sure you know, it will be responded to by interested parties. Okay, when uh, President Buhari was said not to have attended secondary school, he gathered uh, uh, his classmates, they took photographs with him we in, in the villa. Yes, why, 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 is so, why is this so difficult? You know, right. when uh, it was uh, the Meiji Bank College uh, time, within a week, Yes, you know, when, and uh, he a picture. NYSC well, camp, and he picture. True pictures out. Pictures out. Yes. Okay, yes. this one had to take up to 20 years. 23 years. I, 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 I think we, 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 have, we have to do right. something about qualification. Right. Yeah. Anybody that does not have a basic degree, and anybody whose classmates will show up after 20 years, <laughs> or, you, or whose secondary school classmates will have to come to the villa to validate. Yeah. Look, that's ridiculous, well, man. Right. In a country where some people have three master's degrees, yes. double PhDs, yes. why is you know, it like that it's that division that two point. people well, right. that will be uh, division three people <laughs> that will be the ones uh, say, saying they want to rule Nigeria? All right, well said, guys. Let's, well, let's end what's trending today. In the spirit of Throwback Thursday, with this video of a South African politician and activist, Mbusei Ngozi, who during a rowdy debate on former President Jacob Zuma's impeachment back in 2016, accused the former international relations minister, Maite Mashabane, of sleeping on the job. Well, let's take a look before we come back for a discussion. Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker. Yes, Honorable Member. I'm worried that uh, this minister that we pay so much, Minister Maite Mashabane, <laughs> she's sleeping in parliament, and with that position, she's going to fall. Honorable. And the minister would have fought. She's still sleepy. Honorable member. She's still. I don't know. What's happening? That's not a point of order. Take your it's seat. It's No, no, no. The minister is sleeping. You can't say that's not a point of order. No, Josie, has Are you condoning you, people please. sleeping now? Josie, has we must come, come for to you. sleep here in parliament. Honorable self, proceed. We pay you. Don't sleep here. Hey, man. We are busy debating, you are hey, sleeping. You, know way, no man. Hey, you are a sleepist, you think we are sleepist here? Take your here. seat, Honorable Minister, why are you rising? No, I want to understand what this young boy is talking to. No, Honorable Minister, that's not a point I of order. I want to respond to this young man. No, take your seat, when? Honorable Minister. What you can't Minister, do that. you must sleep and we must Honorable keep quiet. Honorable Minister. No. Honorable Member. He sends you to admit when you are wrong. You are sleeping. Honorable Minister.
Well, this is a big problem. Sleeping on duty. I mean, I never heard the word sleep is, but that was quite funny. Okay, I know oh, you're hold going on, I hold know on. You're going Let's take another throwback video, though, with a similar conversation. But this time in Nigeria, and it was during the just concluded presidential election oh, petition sorry. tribunal, where lawyers and petitioners turned the courtroom into a sleeping maison on September 6th. Let's take a look. <laughs> The second respondent did not conduct any fresh primary election for the purpose of picking another running mate for the third respondent after the withdrawal of the future respondent. Therefore, in my view, the requirement to conduct a fresh primary election does not apply to the nomination of the vice presidential candidate. That's my lot of DJC. I let it at this point in the one. Well, these are all oh, sleepies. Rufai, I'm sorry. I'm, Dude, uh, it was trending. I was nowhere I could you, not you do have this. Too much violence no, no, absolutely not. I mean, sleeping on the job is a big problem. Dr. Abati, we don't have any time, but we, we have to go. This, yes. uh, <laughs> and we advise that yeah. maybe, uh, you know, the managers of the Supreme Court yes. should watch out for CC Fly yeah. invading <laughs> the premises of the uh, oh, Supreme Court you. so that uh, yes. people don't just go there and sleep. Uh, but you saw the sleeping patterns, yeah. the creativity <laughs> that people brought to sleeping uh, in, at the Supreme Court. But in any case, these are human beings. Right. That judgment ran for about 13 well, hours. Over so it's just a, an affirmation yes. that human beings can get tired. You said that. The well, 2016 well. video from uh, South Africa, yeah. you know, our own the <laughs> lawmakers also sleep here. Yes, so our own ministers that is why I'm are also up sleeping so on it's duty. It's a big problem. No more sleeping on thank duty. Thank you very well. much. I'd like to thank you all for your great analysis, thank as you. always, on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending.